Uh, let me welcome members to the 10th meeting in 2015 of the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee. I remind everybody to switch off mobile phones as they may affect the broadcasting system. Uh, we have received apologies from Patricia Ferguson and Mark Griffin is appearing in her stead today. Uh, agenda item one. Uh, our first item today is for members to agree to take items five and six in private. Uh, item five is consideration of the rules in printed and published documents. And item six is consideration of the rules in the Code of Conduct and Cross-Party Groups. Do members agree to take these items in private? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Uh, agenda item two. Uh, our next item is for members to consider whether it's consideration of standing order rule changes in relation to a report on published and printed documents, an approach to an inquiry into law commission bills, the approach to changes resulting from the Smith Commission, and the consideration of confidentiality in the Code of Conduct should be taken in private at future meetings. Do members agree to take these items in, in private at future meetings? Agreed. Thank you. We're agreed. Right. Agenda item three. Uh, is for the committee to consider an update on cross-party groups. Uh, members will note from the monitoring report the continued improvements uh, in the overall level of compliance with the Code. A update since the monitoring report uh, was issued. Uh, the cross-party group on life sciences has scheduled two meetings, an ordinary meeting on the 11th of June and an AGM on the 16th of June. The cross-party group on Middle East and South Asia has now submitted its annual return. Does anyone wish to make any comments on the report that's before us? And in particular, uh, do we wish to take any action on uh, non-compliant groups? Uh, I'm content as convener that that be dealt with by the clerks, uh, if that helps you come to a conclusion. Yes, Dave Thompson. Yeah, just one um, point of correction. Um, the list of groups, it's, uh, we have the psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis group, but it, it has changed to skin and associated rheumatic conditions, but that would have been maybe after the date of this report, so that's fine. Okay, that's a technical change which we're quite happy with. Uh, are we otherwise content then? We are. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, agenda item four, Gil Patterson, uh, is on the rules to cons uh, consider the rules on lobbying and access to MSPs. Gil, do you wish? Yes, I, I would like to withdraw at this particular time. If I stayed here, since you'll be making some decisions, then I think it may be construed as a conflict of interest. So I would like to withdraw, let the committee make its own mind up without me, and uh, I'll come back in for the other items if I'm Tap, tap on the shoulder. Uh, that's very helpful, uh, Mr. Patterson. Uh, obviously, that's an individual decision for you, and in similar circumstances, it will be up to other members to make their own view. I don't regard it as setting a precedent one way or the other. Thank you very much. Thanks for that. Right, we'll resume when Gil leaves the room. Right, um, we have a paper uh, in front of us, colleagues, yes there we are, um, which uh, I invite you to make any comments you wish to make on. Uh, we, have, um, we have considered the matter before, and uh, in particular I think there's, there's helpful uh, discussion of what it is to be a director. And I must say, for my part, even though having been one in the past, I, I didn't ever realise that it was less precise in law than perhaps I had thought it was. Uh, well, there are certainly clear uh, cases where one is a director because of law. It's clear that one can be a director uh, without necessarily having the word or having a, a formal appointment, which is perhaps a... Uh, a little nudge in a particular direction for us. Right, members. Margaret. Just, um, it's quite difficult to establish if a person has another position, another job, a directorship, or a, is a member uh, of another company, uh, just how much time they're actually 
spend on that secondary job? And, you know, how do you measure that? Well, wearing a personal hat rather than a mm -hmm. convener hat, um, and there will be others in the room who have been directors, I suspect most directors um, don't keep timesheets. <laughs> So, you know, an attempt, any attempt to formally come to a conclusion, it would inevitably be an estimate, and it would probably be capable of being demonstrated as not being accurate. I think, I think probably the, the, the objective thing that we do have is what earnings somebody might derive from an outside activity, and I think that's, it's quite clear that we have to declare that, and it seems clear that we, we, we do that. Yes, Cameron. I, mean, I don't think it's a question of time so much because often these directorships can be on a Saturday or in the evening. I do think it's a question of remuneration and involvement, but not time. I don't think that's in any way relevant. I'm a director of four or five, or well, three companies, two of which are charities, sorry, four companies, two of which are charities, and the time is variable depending if there's a crisis in the charity, benefactors, etc. Sometimes I have to go down to London, sometimes I don't. But they're not really highly remunerated, just the travel expenses. One is, which is declared. So I'm not sure the time is relevant in this case because I try and fit in, because I'm chairman, I try and fit the time in to suit, the, they suit me, if you like, rather than I suit them, and that often happens. So I would be against the banning of that sort of thing. <coughs> but we're quite clear that uh, any remuneration, which is an objective thing, Absolutely. has to be declared. Mm -hmm. the time, as you said, can be subjective. You don't record accurately how long a meeting takes, particularly when it's... At least I don't, anyway. I mean, it, at paragraph 10, it says that the, the highest annual sum is £20,000. Yep. It doesn't give you any indication of the time again. I know you, you, you feel that's not a, an issue, but it's, it's hard for anyone just to, to gauge £20,000. Well, what are you doing for that, you know? compared with uh, an MSP's income? I, I, I suppose maybe the, 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 the test for us is whether outside interests diminish the ability of people to do the job they've been elected to do. That's, mm -hmm. that, that's if you like, perhaps the first, the first test. Um, the, 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 the second test is, of course, whether the outside interest um, engages, it puts people at risk of being seen to be influenced by their involvement in these outside interests. And I, I, my current position uh, is that, uh, uh, that that we have both of these covered in our existing rules. Now that doesn't mean we should, you know, be careful to consider whether that statement I've just made is sustainable or not. I think that's entirely, entirely uh, proper. Um, Yes, it, it, uh, paragraph 16, it's just been drawn to my attention, um, the highest declared time commitment to the moment is 40 days per year. Um, I suspect, without having any knowledge of the matter, um, that uh, it, where people have declared the time commitment, they're probably more generous than the reality, just to make sure they're not caught out. Um, but it isn't required to declare the time, is it? But they do, but people do. I mean, we could. Yes, David. Yeah, it's not on the time point. No, no. Let, let, let's just have a free flowing discussion to yeah. work out where we're going to go with this. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> having read the, the papers uh, here today, <clears throat> what, what struck me quite forcibly, and uh, I'm not against, uh, you know, driving forward and pioneering and doing things that others don't do. So, if it's the right thing to do. But what struck me, looking at what happens in other jurisdictions, none of them <laughs> um, require what we're looking at here. Now, that doesn't mean to say they're all right and they don't need to change, but it just struck me that uh, I would need to be convinced that there's a real need for a problem here to be fixed. I'd have to be convinced, first of all, that there's a problem that we need to fix. Because if there's no problem, why are we trying to fix something that doesn't exist? And I worry, having looked at the definitions of directors and the various different things in here, if by in trying to fix a problem which isn't apparent, to me anyway, and I could be wrong, 
How do you do that without potentially causing more problems? Because as soon as you start to try to define um, an issue in terms of resolving a problem which may or may not be real, we could get ourselves into a real morass because you then get bogged down in all sorts of detail about definitions and everything else. So just that broad general point, uh, I felt. And, and at the moment, if people are involved, if they're getting paid, they have to declare these things anyway. So it, it's out there, it's in public. So folk know that they're doing it. And you know, if someone's spending far too much time on an issue, that would become a political issue for them because their opponents would soon point it out to their constituents that that person is spending all their time working and, and earning cash and not doing the job as an MSP. So I, I actually think that where we are just now isn't a bad position. And as I say, all these other, um, you know, the Parliament of, uh, well, the UK, Canada... Uh, Welsh Assembly, Northern Ireland, uh, the House of Lords, even the European uh, Parliament, Malta, <coughs> the European <coughs> Parliament. None of them do this. <coughs> now they might, all, they might all be wrong, but I just worry that we're <coughs> going down a road here that isn't necessary. So that's. I, do, I don't think we should be scared of setting higher standards than no, anyone no. else does in any way. But, but of course, we already do that. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm aware. There is no other jurisdiction that has the prejudice test, which is actually the key catch-all. And, 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 of course, we have in lots of our, uh, uh, our, our rules um, could be thought to. You know, in other words, it, it's about perception, not just simply the objective of what you do. And I suspect we're probably pretty tight. Right, I'm, I'm in your hands colleagues as to what we wish to do with this. Nothing, I think, has yet emerged that we want to take forward. Margaret? What, what happens in the, if, I know it hasn't, or probably hasn't happened, if there was a case where an MSP um, wasn't declaring, you know, there was a conflict or he didn't feel, or she didn't feel there was conflict with, you know, their secondary uh, Post, but others did, you know, within Parliament. Well, that's that. Is there? I mean, I'll take advice, but of course, that can be referred by anyone who feels uh, that the rules, including the prejudice test and the could thought to be uh, tests, um, and it would then be objectively considered. So, you know, we have a process uh, for dealing with that. I mean, we, we I, I don't want to name names because it's invidious to do so. We we, we certainly. A, in session one and two, we had one member uh, who who spent a great deal of his time working as a QC. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and at the end of the day, I suspect that may or may not have played a part in the fact that they didn't get re-elected at the end of session two. Uh, but I suspect there were other more important factors related to that. And at the end of the day, it was very much public. There was no, you know, it, 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 it properly behaved, properly reported. Um, and uh, I think Dave Thompson is correct. It did become a matter of some political comment from time to time. Um, and that was probably as far as reasonably it could interact with what went on. But I think that's the only one who I think had what, what might be thought to be a full-time job outside his MSP. Or, or, or at least a half-time job, you know, very significant, with significant earnings as well. <coughs> Colleagues, I, 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 I think it's been a, you know, a useful exercise to look at this. Um, I, I think where we currently are is that we're not identifying any actions we wish to take out of this. Um, I'm putting that to you. Is that the view of the committee? It is. Right. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Um, I now move this uh, meeting into private session.